Do you have the requirements to build a checklist for your users? Well, in this video, we're going to show you how and how you can download the code to accomplish just that. So stay tuned. Welcome back. We do these things called hackathons at Pragmatic Works. We have a, a we train a customer with their own business example. About half of the examples we see though are checklists where you want to take a widget and make sure that the quality is good on that widget, or you want a uh, end of the year checklist for checking out of a dorm or maybe uh, onboarding of a new employee. So it's a very common use case and there's a lot of variations to it. But we've created that Pragmatic Works a starter kit for you to begin uh, to where you can kind of start on the 50 yard line, we hope. It's called our Universal Checklist application, and you can download it on GitHub in the link down below. In this video, we'll show you what it is and how to install it, and then lastly, how to configure it. So let's begin. Well, first of all, this is the checklist application. We'll come back to that in a second because something we're about to do is going to take a few seconds to do its thing. So first thing we'll do, is we'll go ahead and download the two components. You'll find the links in the chat in the uh, description of this. First thing to install is the UI components. This has a whole bunch of, of other benefits for you as well, but mainly it has like common headers, common footers, the menu controls, uh, tab controls, and, and the like of that. So we use these quite a bit throughout all of our applications, but you'll just simply download it from the release tab over here and, um, and, get, and keep it as a zip file. So do not uncompress the zip file. Next, you also want to uh, in, uh, download the checklist application. You'll find step-by-step -st -step instructions here, but again, download the release that you see on the right, and that will give you the latest release. Um, you can choose, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll choose a manage code in this case, and then you're all set. All right, so once you have that downloaded, go to the environment that you want to install this in. So I have chosen uh, my environment right here. Go to solutions on the left side, and then hit the import button first. Now you're going to browse out to your downloads folder and once you find your downloads folder, uh, point to the two files that you downloaded. You'll do the Pragmatic Works UI components first and then lastly, the uh, and make sure that's fully installed before you do this one next. It's a, it's a prerequisite here. You'll go and download the uh, Universal Checklist, hit next. It will ask you uh, two questions here. Where are your connections at? So you'll just go ahead and create a new connection. It'll pop up. Okay, you'll hit the Create button. All right, authenticate in. And you'll do that twice. Once it, once it comes back, it'll close that window. Then you can close that tab, hit the Refresh, and do it once more. These two connections are used for a, uh, a Power Automate flow for doing things like approvals on, on your task. It's a little bit of, of plumbing that we're using uh, that we'll be using later as we develop this. Those flows are turned off right now, but you can turn them on and notify a user they have a new checklist item out there. Now, both of these installs will take about five minutes to install. The first one, maybe about a minute and a half, and this one's about three or four minutes. So while this is doing its thing, let's go ahead and jump over to the application to show you what you're installing. So uh, back over here again, you can see that, let me get off the screen here so you can see the full thing. Uh, you can see that, of course, we can customize the header and the footer and all those kind of things. And we'll walk through how to do that in a moment here as well. But you'll notice that you can actually create a new checklist. Now, it's giving me an error right now because in my organization, I'm the, the, the highest part of the organization, I'm the CEO. Uh, so in this case, there's nobody that reports to me, but th what it does when I first log in is it creates a contact record for me, and it also creates a manager record for me as well, so I can do things like assign uh, approvals to my manager. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a, uh, a checklist here. Now I'm the principal of a school, for example. And at the end of the year, I wanna go ahead and look at the uh, teacher end of the year checklist. Go ahead and click on it for Brian. And at the bottom here, we're seeing a preview of this checklist where we can override certain things. Like I, I'm on, in the year, I'm gonna go ahead and start this on, on April the 30th. And I can put an internal ID, for example, like a teacher's name, um, whatever I wish, like an employee ID, it uh, doesn't matter. It's whatever you wish, to, wish it to be, a department number or whatever. Then you can also rename the checklist you're creating for Brian over here. So I'll just put a uh, video demo kind of thing. 
Once you have all that done, of course you can change your checklist for who you're doing it for. I can then override and say, well, you know what? The summer maintenance list, uh, Mitchell's out of work right, uh, out of out of office right now, so this is going to go over to Nate instead. So you can change anything like that you wish to do. You can also uh, say, yeah, this 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 requires uh, a manager approval. Does not require a manager approval. You can um, and you can change the approver at that point. So I just change it to manager. It will then gray it out and it will automatically go to my manager, which I don't have one. So let me go ahead and go over to not required. Uh, you can also change the owner. So if I go ahead and say this is going to be the manager that does this, it will then put Marshall in there, or put myself in there, whomever. So as it goes through this, it will kind of determine who owns this item, who is the approver of the item, and you can override this from the template. There is a template that we have created that will that they copied all this data from. Once you're done, hit the Create button, and now um, I have a whole bunch of tasks out there for myself, my manager, and some people that, that work with me as well. To use that checklist, you'll see on the left side, there are a few areas we can have. One area, first of all, is delegate access. This delegate access tells me who can impersonate me. In other words, who can do work on my behalf and people that can also, who can impersonate me. So uh, it's people that can actually do work on my behalf. Here's people I can actually, I'm uh, oh, sorry, here's people I can do work on behalf of and vice versa. So these people can do work for me and I can do work for them right here. This is good if you have a team, uh, a team of people, and you know what? These this team people, they, they don't have time. Uh, in in behalf, I have five people that are all assigned this work. I need to be able to flip between those people in this case. So back over here, and of course, you can change these if you wish as well. So as you do this, you go back over here again. You'll notice that this set of lists right here, people you can impersonate. Uh, you're going to see that in a moment when I go to my work. So this is the work that I have to do right now. And you're seeing this is waiting for, for Nate's approval right here. I've got this item right here that's waiting for Devin to finish this work. But if I want to go ahead and then see what Devin sees, because I can impersonate him, I can select that and then start to complete his stuff here as well. Once all the items are complete, I can simply click on the complete option like right here, or I can hit the info button and see more information about that also. When does it do? Are there any internal IDs for this? I can put any kind of comments on that. You can see approval is not required for this, and I can complete it right from here if I rather instead. So this is a, an easy way to kind of accomplish this check checklist. Of course, it's not comprehensive. We know there's, of course, a lot more that we want to do, uh, but this is a good starting point for most organizations to start on the 50-yard line. Let's go look at the other, other parts of this as well. Uh, there's one more piece to this as well where I can go over here and I can see all checklist and see what, what's out there right now, who, is, uh, uh, who am I pending right now, see, the, see when the work was done, and so on, who's done this work. I have a longer one, there's a longer one right here, where I can actually complete the work on this as well if I'm the, if I'm the owner of that work. All right, so let's see how my import is doing now. I'm gonna go back over to my solution and you can see the import is successful. So now, What's our next step? Well, now that we've got the import successful, uh, a few things that we're gonna do, this is a brand new environment here, so I, I wanna go ahead and do a quick gut check here. Chances are our model-driven application was not published as it imported that the first time. This is a managed solution. So I'm gonna open up the solution. I'll go to apps. Once I go to apps, you'll see two applications that are actually there. Uh, one is a checklist application and one is the administration application. So if I select that, you can see, hopefully, I can go ahead and play it. Yeah, you may wanna check it. Sometimes it, it might not say published when it, during the import. So you might wanna make sure it says published so that shows up for your users. Uh, there's also a security role where you can go ahead and specify who can see what on the left. There's two security roles, one for the administrator and then one for the uh, users. Uh, I'll play this application. This is where I'm going to configure the application and make it where it all is, is harmonious here. On the bottom, you'll see the orchestration areas for our workflows. On top, you'll see the top part is, is which checklists are being used and how they're being used. So what we care about right now is configuration of the checklist. We don't want to have to write an application again for a checklist. So we built this in such a universal way to where you basically do this with templates. So I'll start, my first step is going to be to go over to templates, there we go, and, and create my checklist. After that, I wanna create the items for that checklist next. Then I create the groups. The groups are basically those vertical, those horizontal bars you saw across kind of grouping the, the task together. And it is optional if you want. 
The last step is I'm going to go ahead and compose and bring it all together into one piece. So the formula is almost like a, like a you have your recipe here that you're kind of have all the ingredients laid out. Now you want to combine them into the soup. So the formula is where we can we finally combine all one through three here into a coherent area for one for each item, and we say who the owner is by default and who should be assigned. So let's start with our template here. For our first piece here, we'll create a template. We'll call this um, I don't know how we call this uh, employee onboarding. I'll hit save. Now, as part of the uh, employee onboarding experience, I'm going to go to my groups next, hit a new group, and how about I create one a group called uh, Search and Find, or uh, Job Description. Maybe. Now, this is actually the onboarding. So, how about we call a security group? Let's be actually creating the security, and I'll point to my template. I'll give it an order. Should this go first? Should it go second? Whatever. Hit save and close, and I might create one more group here. This group I'll call, I don't know, um, how about we call this one payroll? Same template, and I'll make that my second my second pit stop. I'll save that, and now that I have that saved, let's go over to our items. Our items are we're going to say these are all the tasks that we want to do. So, and we can use those across multiple checklists. So, my first item will be uh, create security badge. and I can put whatever blah 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 text I want, and that's all you have to do. Let me create one more here. I'll create uh, or two more here. I'll create this one. will be, um, how about what else we do? A, a background check. All right, blah, 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 not required. Hit save and close. And then lastly, I'll do one in the other area as well. Uh, this was for, gosh, what did I do there? Background check. So I'll, I'll do issue, uh, not background check. This was for finance. Uh, enter into payroll. How about that? Blah, blah, blah. Save and close. All right, so I have three items that I want to now add. I have three ingredients and how to bring it together into my checklist. Again, I can use these items over and over again. So we found that customers had these items like um, enter in a payroll. They might have four checklists for different types of personnel they're onboarding. So we went ahead and, and created it universally to where you didn't have to worry about that piece. So to bring this all together, we'll go to our formula here, hit new, and we'll point to our checklist. This is the, um, the employee onboarding checklist. In the employee onboarding checklist, we want to point to the, the uh, security group. Our item will be uh, background check. That'll be our first item in our list. We can also create a hierarchy here, but we're not going to do that right now. And then on the right, who owns this item? Well, I'm creating this list for Hank, so I'm going to go ahead and choose a contact, and I will assign this over to, I don't have a contact yet, so I need to create a contact. So this will be done automatically in the app, but we can also create a contact now if we wish as well. And I'll just call this Hank, uh, Aaron, whatever. And then I'll give him a good email address. I'll give him my, my email address here. All right, well, no, that's right. Let me give it my, another one. All right. So Hank, our security guy, is responsible for this background check. Uh, so I'm going to choose a contact. That 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 item is going to Hank, and I don't really uh, I don't really care about it being a, um, uh, approval. So I'm, I'm not going to have any kind of approval required. And as you can see here, it's going to be marked as pending by default. So I could say this is just an in a, uh, an optional kind of thing. And if I want it, want it to be optional, I can make it NA in this case. All right, let's save and close that. Let's do two more. I'm going to hit the uh, the new button again. This one will go to employee onboarding. Same thing, security. Uh, the checklist will be a back, uh, I think I have the security badge, there we go. Uh, this will be number two, and I'll just make, I'll own this by myself here in this case. And the last item, we'll do one more, employee onboarding, this will be the, the payroll section, and I'm going to own this one as well, uh, that is for entering this in the payroll, this will be my, my first item in that group. And this will be uh, approved, how about by my manager when it's all done? Or, there we go, our Hank's gonna approve this. How about that? All right, cool. So when I save and close this, I now have my three items ready to go, and our app is now ready to go. That's all there is to basically configuring the app and making it ready, ready for prime time. So our next step is to try the application, see how it looks. Well, you've seen the application already. I'm gonna go over to my environment, and I'll just open up this application. This is the Canvas application, just by playing it. 
Now, of course, we can we can tweak this, and uh, it's going to have you make sure that Office 365 is okay. Go ahead and allow that. And now, when I go to create a new checklist, notice it actually created a user. It's recognizing that in Active Directory, I'm the, I'm the top guy, so it can't create a manager for me, unfortunately. But I do see Hank and myself in, in the list here. All right, so it already created that contact for me automatically. Once I do that, I'm going to do an employee, employee onboarding. We see that we're onboarding a certain employee. I'll say onboarding, uh, you know, Henrietta. <laughs> there we go. And once I have that, of course, change the name of this, override anything I want down here, and hit the Create button. At this point, it's copying over those template items over to my actual instance here. So if I go back to that model-driven app here, whoop, there we go. I can see the checklist that was just created and the checklist items that were just created as well. I can go into that checklist. And you can see this, is, this, this item is for Henrietta. And here are my three items down here. So that, that's the purpose of these top tables here. We'll also see in contacts, these are the people that can play with my application also. Uh, not from a security side, but just from a checklist ownership side. So if I go back over here again, uh, up, there we go. I can now go to my work. And I can see what kind of work I got to do now. All right, so we can see that I'm looking at a security badge. I'm going to go ahead and uh, complete that. And then I will complete this item right here. But it's going to hang out on my list until Hank, Hank, or until Hank finishes it. I can then notice there's nothing to impersonate right now. So I need Hank to give me access to that over on the impersonate section. So that is a checklist application. As you can see, it's, it's, it's a good starting point. It should get you 90% of the way there, we hope, and then you can customize the last 10%. If you, want any, if you want us to help with the customization, please reach out to us. You'll find us at pragmaticworks.com. We can train you with this, and we'll actually, we're actually we building a class right now about how we built this. So it's, it's called our App in a Snap series, where we, we actually walk through an end-to-end construction of our design process and our, class, our, our, our uh, app construction as well. But if you want to find out more about this, go to pragmaticworks.com. You'll see our training in the top right. You'll also see our hackathons where we build things like this for companies like yourself. I guess, again, uh, you can reach out to me at bnight at pragmaticworks.com if you want to see us more. Thank you so much, and please do subscribe if you found this video interesting. And again, you'll find the downloads in the uh, bottom of the, uh, pin, the pinned comments or in the description. Have a great day. Bye.